this video we're going to have a look at creating a lightsaber effect as you can see on your screen right now uh, what I did have was an original image of two guys fighting with a sword and I simply made a little lightsaber and put it over the top to replace the sword it looks quite effective now you can either start with this picture that I found on Google Images or you can go onto Google Images and find your own you basically need somebody with either a sword you can even get sportsmen like with golf clubs or cricket bats and just replace it with a lightsaber Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is get the rulers up on our page and these are the rulers that appear around the top and the left hand sides of our page if you can't see them simply press Control R or Command R on your keyboard and they'll appear you can then click on those rulers and drag a vertical ruler onto the page I'm going to do the same again and what I'm looking for here is the rough width of my say, uh, lightsaber so I'm going to have two fairly skinny lines there we go, just making a little bit of a um, rectangle shape. Now what we're going to do next is pick up our rectangle tool and draw the actual lightsaber. Before you draw it, make sure that your fill color in your properties box up here is set to white Oops. and that your stroke is set to nothing. Okay, You do not want a stroke for this lightsaber. Once you've done that, you need to click and drag in between those blue rulers that are on your page and draw yourself a white rectangle something like that. Now before we go any further what we're going to do is try and work out the width of this um, rectangle and the quick way to do it is simply pick up your rectangular marquee tool and simply click and drag over the top of your lightsaber and you can see a little box appears and tells me that the width is 0 0.60 centimeters. Okay so I'm just going to press Control D so to deselect or Command D to deselect on a Mac and get rid of that little rectangular selection we had up. I'm going to click back on my lightsaber here that I've drawn, or the rectangle at the moment, and get my properties panel up. If you can't see this properties panel, just go to your window menu and you can access it from there. Now what we want to do is round the edges. So down the bottom here, I'm just going to type in that 0 0.60 centimeters that I just had. Uh, come up for the width of my rectangle and this should be checked, this little link here, so once I tab out of this box by pressing tab you should see, I'll just turn my transform controls off, our lightsaber now has a rounded top and a rounded bottom. Okay, you can close the properties panel once you've done that. Next thing, go over to your layers panel where you've got rectangle 1, right click on it and rasterize that layer. Okay, that allows us to edit this shape now. What I'm going to do is pick up that rectangle marquee tool again and just highlight the bottom area down here of my lightsaber and just press delete and that's going to chop the bottom of it off. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit more like a lightsaber now. I'm also going to just drag the rulers off the page now. We don't need those anymore, so they're gone. And just press Control D if you can still see the little rectangular selection down the bottom or Command D and that will remove our selection. Okay, so we've got this lightsaber here. Uh, one of the first things I want to do to it is go to Filter, go down to Blur and add a Gaussian Blur onto this. Okay, just take away some of the sharp edges. And the Gaussian Blur size needs to be simply one pixel. So a very small blur that just smooths out those edges a little bit and doesn't make it quite as rough. Okay, I'm going to go to my Layers panel here now and I'm going to rename that layer rectangle one it was to blade. You just simply double click on it and you can rename it. Then I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer and the name I'm going to give the duplicate is called glow. Click OK. Alrighty so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the blade layer here and we're going to double click just outside the name of it and it will bring up our layer style box. I'm going to select the outer glow option here and with the outer glow option selected, I'm going to change the blend mode at the top here to normal. Okay, the opacity, I want to set it around the 80% mark. You can adjust these as need be. The color, it's up to you. I'm going to choose a nice fluoro blue for my color. Okay, and the size, I'm going to start around 70 pixels. Oh, it's still a bit too big, so I'm going to go down. looking something like that and the contour we'll just go back to the first contour here if it's not already set on that or it's just half 
white and half grey. That's looking pretty decent over there at the moment. Not quite finished, obviously, but you should have a nice glow similar to what I've got uh, on your screen. So once you've done that, you can click on OK. Next thing I'm going to do is go up to our glow layer here. I'm going to go up to filter, blur, and a Gaussian blur. And we're going to put a big blur on this now that's around 50 pixels in size. And that should just wash out that blue color that we just put onto our lightsaber. Okay, you can adjust that if you'd like, but I think 50 pixels looks pretty good. Once you've done that, back to the layer box. We should, we should still be on the glow layer here. We're going to change the fill to 0%. Oops. Okay, so you should see the glow layer now with a 0% fill. And we're going to double click now next to the name of glow here. That will bring up our layer style box here. And we're going to also put on another outer glow. There's a few settings we need to change here. The blend mode needs to be soft light. The opacity will be around 50%. Uh, the size we're going to make fairly large. We're going to make it about 200 pixels. And the contour, we're going to choose this second one in, which is the cone contour. Okay, so that should be looking pretty good. You can click on OK. Really start to see our lightsaber coming together. Uh, one more thing we might do to make this look a bit more realistic is go back and select the blade layer. Go up to filter. And we're going to do another blur, but this time it's going to be a motion blur. Okay, and the motion blur... We'll make the angle, we'll say about 10 degrees. The distance, this is a bit of trial and error. I'm going to start on about 20 pixels. That's obviously too much. I'll bring it down to 10. Even that looks like too much. I might go with about 5 pixels. It's a 10 degree angle, 5 pixels for the distance. You choose whatever you think looks good. Click OK. That's basically your lightsaber done. What we need to do now is get it onto... onto this sword here. Okay, so with your move tool, just pick up your blade, let's get into its starting position. Make sure show transform controls is checked at the top because then you can rotate it. Got to get it at the same angle as this sword, so it might take a little bit of trial and error. It also looks a bit big, so I might just reduce the size of it there a bit. Uh, still a bit too long, so. Bring it in about there. Okay, so now it's just a matter of fiddling around till you get this sword right over the top. Oh, sorry, the lightsaber right over the top of the sword. You can turn the show transform controls option off. I'll just apply those effects first. And that'll remove the bounding box. I'm going to press Z and, or Z and move in nice and close here and just adjust this lightsaber using my arrow keys a little bit. Uh, I might need to turn the transform controls back on to give it a bit of a rotate. It's quite fiddly, but eventually, I'll zoom out there, you get the lightsaber that looks oh, pretty realistic once it's in a good position there. So I'll turn the show transform controls off. That doesn't look too bad. If you wanted to, I'm just going to collapse these effects over here in the layers. Um, and I'm going to highlight both the glow and the blade layer by clicking on them and holding shift and clicking the other one. I'm going to duplicate the layers. Now when I press this, watch my blade really brighten up. Okay, I'll just click OK when that name box comes up. You can see it really popping now. Okay, so it's up to you if you want to duplicate those layers and make an even brighter blade. Uh, it's up to you. Another thing you can do as well when you duplicate, so I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Click OK, and I'm going to move this blade over and simply do the second guy. Okay, so I'll turn my transform controls back on, use my move tool to give it a bit of a rotate, stretch it out a bit, and we'll see if we can get this into position. Use your arrow keys to nudge it around if you need to. It's a little bit fat, so it might make him a little bit skinnier. Alright, so close enough. I won't go into too much detail now. You get the idea. Now with that blade selected, you can actually go over to your layers here. Double click on the layer styles and change the color of this outer glow. OK, 
Okay, so for this one, maybe I want to go a green type color. I'm going to go a fluoro green. This hexadecimal code down here, I'm going to copy, so highlight it and press Control or Command C. Click OK. Click OK. Do the same for the layer below it. Okay, you'll just need to go back to the outer glow and change its color as well. In the hexadecimal box down the bottom, just paste in that code. Click OK. Click OK. And you've got your next lightsaber. All done and dusted. Okay, if you wanted to, you could rename those layers, but there's not too many there, so they aren't too confusing. That's how you make the cool Star Wars lightsaber effect. Okay, when you're finished, just go to File, Save As, give it a name like Lightsabers. You'll want to change it to a JPEG so it's ready to save for the web. Click Save. A box is going to come up asking you what quality you want your image. I'm going to stick with maximum because 540 kilobytes is not a large size. Click save and we're done.